So, first and foremost, Happy New Year. It's officially been a whole year since I started going into content creation full time and I would have never expected to have made it as far as I have. I mean, I only started posting to this main channel at the end of August and in four months we're already nearing 3,000 subscribers. It is still unreal to me and it wouldn't be possible without the help of you guys. I'm thankful for each and every one of you that sticks around to watch the videos, it really means a lot to me. But with the sentimentals out of the way, it's time for murder. The Soul Suspect. And for a lot of you, you have probably never heard of this game in your life. Murdered Soul Suspect came out back in good old 2014 and was developed by Airtight Games. And you'd think that in the 10 years of this game being published, it would have a pretty secure PC port. Um, no. When trying to load up this game for the first time, it took me a whopping 3 hours to actually get the game started. So, just as a bit of a guide for anyone who wishes to play the game for themselves, here's just a few ways to fix the issue. First of all, you can create a shortcut to the exe file itself by going to the game in your Steam library, picking to browse files and making a shortcut to murdered.exe. Then going into the properties of said shortcut, add dash dx9 to the end of this segment, making sure to leave a space in between. Or, for any NVIDIA users, and this is what solved the problem for me personally, to go into the NVIDIA control panel, manage 3D settings, program settings, and to add murder.exe as its own settings and pick the high performance options. But now that we can actually get into the game, I just want to point out that due to Murdered being a murder mystery style game, the shock of the big reveal at the end wears off after the first time playing. So if you can, I would heavily suggest going and playing the game for yourself first. As janky as it can be sometimes, it has an amazing story and some pretty fun gameplay. So if you like solving stuff like me, even after this video, there is a bunch of side stories and lost souls who you can help out, which I don't even mention in this video. There is also still a lot of collectibles and secrets just generally waiting for you if you choose to look into the game some more. And just personally, I love the game, so I just suggest giving it a go anyway. In Murdered Soul Suspect, we play as Ronan O'Connor, a detective who we'll learn a lot more about in a moment. But while on chase with a suspect of a series of killings, he himself is killed, leading to him becoming a ghost. And for the rest of the game, it revolves around Ronan attempting to find out the identity of who killed him, using his new abilities as a spirit to help him out. But as always, let's just get into it. Before getting into any gameplay, we are shown a series of events which keys us into what's led up to this moment in present day. We are informed that the game takes place in Salem, Massachusetts, and that the town is riddled by a serial killer named the Bell Killer. The main telling of them being just a bell symbol that they leave at every killing site, and as of right now, the police have no leads as to who this person may be. We are then taken to Ronan himself, who gives us a bit of backstory on himself, which will be really important to us soon. grow up on the streets, you start thinking you're invincible. Nothing can touch you. You never really lose. Go to arrest some freak, find out you aren't as invincible as you thought. What kind of name is Ronan? That kid stole my wallet! Time to make it official. Dad, it hurts! You steal my car, you pay the price! Ah! Under arrest for the assault and battery of Vincent Coulter. Guilty on two counts of grand theft auto. On the indictment of burglary. Grand larceny and assault with a deadly weapon. <laughs> Let me take it.
I can't have my sister marrying some bum, right? They do. Oh, yeah, I do. No. No, Julia. Stay with me, you hear me? Julia. No, stay with me! Stay with me! Your family wore felonies like badges of honor. Now you think this new badge covers all that up? You're a fucking criminal. You need to slow down, man. Right? This is crazy. I didn't know better. So you actually want to die. Turn around. You're under arrest. <gasps> Survive that. Uh, stay where you are, dirtbag. I'm coming back up. Coming back into present day, we see Ronan fall out of a window in a chase with who we find is a suspect of a Bell Killer case. Looking around, Ronan is relieved to be alive before attempting to get back on the chase, only finding out that he is no longer able to open up doors until. Watch it, lady. Oh, no. No. No, no, no. Ronan's body lays in the middle of the street, and attempting to get back into our body seems like a viable option. However, our suspect makes sure of our passing with seven bullets straight to the chest, and we are brought into the ghost world, with our suspect walking off as if nothing had happened before we make our attempt to walk towards the light and towards Julia. Ronan? I can't believe it. I can't believe I found you. Oh my god. Julia. I thought I'd never see you again. You look good. <laughs> I look better. would give anything to be there with you for us to be together again but but what no oh no no not again not you if you're not here where are you it's the other side of the bridge bridge what what bridge where you are is a prison or a bridge it all depends on how you see it either way where you are isn't safe do you hear me? We need to get you across the bridge. You need to move on. Move on? Is that where you are? Don't worry about me. Something about your life isn't finished yet. We don't have much time. Think. What about your life feels unresolved? I don't know. To figure that out. Now go! Julia, you left me once and it destroyed me. Please, please don't leave me again. We'll see each other again, love. Just save yourself. No, 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 Julia! Don't leave me, Julia! Julia has already moved on, and in order for us to do the same, we need to resolve any unfinished business that we have left over. And while we begin to figure that out, we see that our body has finally been recorded by some passerbys. And, of course, attempting to talk to either of them is entirely futile. Our connection to the living has been entirely cut off, however, the sight of another spirit catches Ronan's eye. And giving chase to the girl, we find that we are now able to pass through any real-world objects like this fence. However, ghostly objects of old buildings and items are still like walls to us. But after catching up to the girl, she explains the ghost world a little bit better. Hey. Why did you run? It gets old, giving counsel to the new ones. Don't take it personal. Running through walls, making things appear. You, you look like you've been here a while. You must know how this place works then. <laughs> works? This place isn't hard to understand. Figure out your gifts and maybe you won't get trapped here.
What do you mean, gifts? Your strengths in life are stronger in death. They become powers here. Some power is unique, some common. Possession, influencing people, manipulating the more fragile of ghostly objects to appear or disappear. Strengths become abilities. Huh. The door just hit me, but I'm passing through other stuff. What is it with this place? I thought I'd be able to walk through everything. We can't enter the buildings the people of Salem have consecrated. Save through an opening. An open drawer or a window. But once inside, walls and doors hold no power over us. You'll know the ghostly objects we can't pass through by their blue glow. It will all seem logical in due time. Who are you? Looks like you've been here a while. Me? I'm just someone like you. But hear me when I say this is no playground. You can rob yourself of your future, or others can do it for you. No, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. How could I rob my own future? You're here to resolve something. You don't resolve it, you don't leave. Don't worry, that's pretty common. Common? That's crazy. What do you mean, others can steal my future? Demons. They were once like us, but lost themselves. They can never move on now, and exist only to consume those lingering here. Those like us. I getcha. She then leaves us before this pit in the ground opens up. Hands of what? We can assume to just be demons or other malicious spirits trying to pull us inside. She then tells us to be careful before running off. And we are now back on our own, but... We now know what we have to do. We must find out the Bell Killer's identity for us to be able to move on. We are then left to explore however flashing lights and the sound of sirens grab our attention. And I want to just talk about the art style of the game really quickly. The town of Salem is this grisly, dim looking place and anything that belongs to the ghost world is covered by this blue hue and anything that is a hazard or is a cause of death is highlighted in this orange glow and it just generally looks really nice. Even just from a gameplay perspective, it just kind of solidifies it in the world without having some big thing over it saying, hey, this is a fucking hazard, don't touch it. You're just kind of like, oh, that shit orange, I'm not going to touch it. As well as this, anything that jiggles or glows weirdly is something that we can interact with and just once again, it helps a lot with gameplay and not once did I have a question if I could interact with something because the game style is so heavily consistent throughout the entire game, it, it never confused me once. But returning to the street that we died on, we can now find an investigation has begun and we can get to learning the game's main mechanic, which is of course, investigating scenes of interest. Standing over our body, we are introduced to some of the force. Great idea, Baxter. Tamper with the evidence. Backup. Who needs backup? <laughs> you shouldn't have tried to be one of us. <laughs> Man, you were one dumb son of a bitch. <clears throat> Sir? Hey, 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 Baxter, hey! Hey, just get back to taking them statements. Come on. Yeah, I'm the stupid one. Look, this is not your scene, Lieutenant. Just pay your specs and move on, please. Yeah, maybe it's not my scene, but it is my case. Tomorrow it'll be my case, and the next day. Until we catch him. You do well to remember that, Sergeant. Look, I'm just following Captain's orders here. You know the procedure when a family member is. 
Yeah, well. Take all the time you need, LT. Last count of the times I wished you were dead. You do me a favor, con man. Tell Julie I miss her. She knows, Rex. She knows. But starting our investigation, we learned that to gather information, we can either look around the items in the area, or possess and manipulate others in the area to find out what they know. And looking around, our main quest is to just find some kind of a lead, with multiple types of info gathering being shown to us. Like picking out the most important piece of data from a notebook, or influencing the minds of witnesses into telling us what they really saw. Things that just add a nice puzzle element into the game, where these segments would otherwise just be a walking simulator with cutscenes. While here, we can listen to a few different conversations, most importantly one from a witness where we can influence her into telling the interviewing officer that she saw the bell killer in the top floor of the apartment we fell out of, and one from Baxter and another officer. What a night, huh, Robinson? Yeah. I don't get it. What was he even doing here? Asking for it. A witness called in saying he saw the bell killer enter a building. Ronan responds, disregards orders for backup. <laughs> Next thing you know, the bell killer tried to see if he could make him sprout angel wings. And then bam, 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 bam. You really, Seven to the chest. You really point have, blank. You really have no idea when to quit, do you, Baxter? <laughs> Ever take a look at those tattoos of his? All that gangland prison crap? He was more criminal than cop. You live like a thief, you die like a thief. He was still a badge, dickhead. Putting all our clues together, we decide that the best course of action is to go back up to that top floor and figure out why the bell killer was there in the first place. The inside of the apartment is just as dingy as the outside, and we discover quickly that we're not the only ghost in here. Traveling from room to room, we can learn small parts of the lives of the people that are living in this apartment, but what we're most interested in is making it back up to the top, and on the way there, we run into that girl again, finding her writing a bunch of strange messages on the walls, which she states are not for us, before disappearing. And continuing down the hallway, we are introduced to our main enemies for the whole game. Demons. Every now and then while investigating an area, demons will show up, and if seen, we must hide from them using the remnants of other spirits who were there before us. However, it is possible to fight back, and coming up behind a demon, we are able to execute them. But that's only if you're able to sneak up on them first. They can show up at any time throughout the game, and to be honest, I remember playing this game when I was a kid, and even now they still scare the shit out of me as much as they did back then. They have these weird, twitchy movements and are more of a floating cloak with a mouth than anything. A small detail that you can also notice is when executing a demon, you can actually see the original soul come out of them, which is just a nice touch. And as we continue to climb up to the top floor, we must now look around, being wary of the demons who can show up upon our path. But making it up to the top floor, we can begin another investigation. This time to try and figure out what the bell killer was actually doing here in the first place. And while here, we see Baxter mention this. Hey, Broyles. 
You seen that little girl that lives here? If she turns up, you come find me. Got it? There's a girl that lives here and coming back to the clipboard from our first investigation, we can assume that she is one of the two missing tenants. And taking a look around, we can find a multitude of different clues relating to the tenants who lived here. One being Cassandra Foster, who was working as a psychic profiler for the police department before she went missing. As well as Joy Foster, who we can assume to be her daughter and the girl that Baxter wants to find. And while here, we can find that we can bring back memories of the locations and take a guess at what was going on there. For example, in this room, we start off by finding the bell killer, looking around in the apartment and finding out that the girl that Baxter was on about turns out to be a witness to our interaction with the bell killer. And us barging in might have just saved her life. Turn around. You're under arrest. And before we go any further, I want to point out how strong the bell killer is. I mean, he's able to just lift us completely over his head with seemingly no issue. And I feel like there should be more talk about this in game, but they just, they just completely gloss over how much of a fucking unit he is. But we figure out that Joy must have gone to the church and we head over to the window to exit the apartment, deciding that... For whatever reason, the killer must be after Joy and therefore we need to find her and look for clues. We are now able to freely explore, well, somewhat freely, the town of Salem. And this is a great opportunity to go and look for collectibles, lost souls, etc. And even for those that have beaten the game, there's a mod that you can add which allows you to go back to Salem even if you've already gone through the ending cutscene. But as an example of one of those lost souls I was talking about, on the way to the church, we can find this woman on the beach who is utterly confused and has no clue what has happened to her. But after taking a look around, we can put her mind at ease by letting her know that she went out as a savior after her boat capsized after saving a bunch of people from a sinking ship. She didn't know how to swim and presumably drowned. But these lost souls can be found everywhere throughout the game. I mean, there's even ones in the apartment that I didn't talk about. They're gonna be all over the game and I heavily suggest that if you play the game to go and look for them because their stories are really unique and they all characterize themselves and it's just a nice little touch to the game. After entering the church, our immediate task is to find wherever Joy went off to. We can do so by heading to the back of the church and finding Joy taking the elevator up to some other floor and in order to get up there, we must take possession of this black cat and do some sick cat parkour to get up to Joy's open window being careful of some windows along the way. Walking into Joy's room, we get this first interaction. Possess me again. I'll, I'll, you have no right to dump your unfinished business Hold on. on me. Now, I'm tracking down my killer, okay? Someone who was seconds away from attacking you about an hour ago, and if. Wait a minute. You, you can see me and hear me? <gasps> Holy shit. 
shit. You're a medium. <laughs> well, I ain't, ain't I the luckiest guy in the world? I just found the perfect little helper. What is it with you guys and my family? Helping the cops do their job is not some, some privilege. It's a trap. I'm not your informant, your partner, or your friend. I don't owe you anything. You owe me. Dick. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. You're tough, okay? But you're not tougher than him. You saw what he can do. He's coming after you or someone close to you. Whoever he wants dead is lucky to still be alive. Now, I know what I'm doing, and you can help me stop him. All you have to do is answer some questions. Look, I'm sorry. What happened to you was horrible. And you... You saved my life, so... What do you want? She informs us that like her mom, she is also a psychic, but she prefers to move around from place to place to avoid recognition from people who just want to bombard her with a bunch of questions about their dead relatives. She states that she doesn't know where her mom is, but that when she wasn't missing, she was a profiler for the police, which she believes might be the cause for the bell killer coming to look for her. She then pulls out a note from her mother telling her of some kind of book she had about the bell killer, one which Ronan believes to be some kind of case log of anything Joy's mother knew about the bell killer, and it comes to the conclusion that that would be at the police station. But before Ronan can convince Joy to stick together to mutually help each other with their problems, Joy refuses and dips out the elevator. You're not safe alone. You need someone watching over you. Us cops find missing people. I found you and I can help you find your mom. Your problem is now my problem too. No way. Uh, don't get me wrong, you saved my life, and okay, I can't pay that back, but your problems are your problems, and mine are mine. <sighs> there they are. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Have a nice afterlife. Oh, wait a minute. Don't go yet. Just stop for a second, will you? We're on the same side. If your mother's involved, we need to work together. Work together? What are you gonna do? You're dead. I'll handle it. Just... LEAVE ME ALONE! In this scene, we can note that Joy has some kind of powerful scream that affects spirits, but we don't have time to think about it too long as we have to find a way to catch up with Joy, meaning it's time for more cat gameplay as we follow her to the bottom floor through an open window, before making our way through some demons, learning we can use crows throughout the environment to distract them, making them easier to execute, and making our way back out the front door to travel towards the police station. Our time in the church is quick, but what we do learn is that Joy is a character who is going to help us throughout the game. Even if she doesn't seem like it now, she's a really good contrast to Ronan. Ronan has changed his ways, he used to be cold and rough, he was a criminal, and now he's a detective, he wants to help people. But Joy is still this very cold, standoffish character who just doesn't want anything to do with anything. However, even at the start of the game, we can see this like underlying part of her that wants to help Ronan, maybe just because she feels bad for him for dying, but you'll see this throughout the game. Strange coming back here now, like this. A place I used as a crutch to get through the tough times when I found myself suddenly alone again. Funny how history repeats itself. Not tonight. Tonight was the first time he used a gun. This guy relies on close proximity. So remember, if you approach him, it gives him power. But, sir, if we can't approach him, how do we arrest him? Remember your training. He's a wanted cop killer now. You can shoot him on sight. Bell Killer War Room. Starting our investigation in the Bell Killer War Room, we can find clues detailing both the appearance of the Bell Killer and a note detailing to update the logs about Joy and Cassandra's disappearances. We can find Rex obviously frustrated with the current situation, and using our newfound poltergeist abilities, we can move some papers to reveal a key link between the Bell Killer cases. That being that the use of hemp rope is heavily prevalent with the cases. 
And after finding enough clues, another officer walks in who we can influence to update Joy and Cassandra's file and find that Joy has been put into custody on our way here and we know where to find her. Making our way over to her, we find that- <laughs> Oh god, what is- What is that? <laughs> I mean, we make our way over to the holding area to find Joy. Each one of these keys is a felony. Each one. You get that, right? No? Alright, it's your funeral. Sit tight, relax. You're gonna be here for a while. Fuck! Alright, look. Look, I might be able to help you. Is your mom's book from the Bell Killer case here? Yes, and it would probably help me find my mom, but as I told you before, you're dead. How can you possibly help me? Hey, I know this place better than you. Now, who did your mom work with here? Who? I don't know. She just called him Baxter. Baxter. Alright. His office was on the second floor. You stick with me, I'll get you there. Let's go. Go where? They're watching. Not for long. Turning off the camera, we're able to sneak Joy out of the holding rooms and slowly make our way over to the different areas of the station. Using our poltergeist ability to distract the many officers who could possibly find Joy, and once on the other side, we find one of those hand pits again, making our only choice of getting across being to possess Joy. And she is not happy about it. Nice job, kid. We're almost there. I don't need a cheerleader. Hey, I got us this far, didn't I? You got yourself killed, Mr. Bullet Holes. Uh, hey, kid. I these things. Uh, I, I can't get across there. You're gonna have to help me. Well, can't you just fly over it? Fly? I'm a ghost, not a plane, all right? And look, you need me to tell you which office is his. Duh. We do another section of sneak past the cops before being able to look for the different offices, finding Baxter's office in a mess of folders and cases. And while looking for the book, Joy knocks over some cases, revealing Ronan's old criminal record. As it turns out, even though Rex had helped us get into the force, Baxter had still kept the files around, However, I had never actually used it as blackmail against Ronan. While looking around, we can find a variety of different clues, such as a leftover voicemail, one which we can get Joy to play for us, which is from Rex informing Baxter that he's off the case, and that he needs all of his information, including the book, to be put in his office. So we can infer that the book is probably still in Baxter's office somewhere. And after finding some suspicious scratches on the wall, we can find that... The gun rack in Baxter's office opens up to reveal a small gap in the wall, one which we can find Cassandra's book inside of. Oh, please tell me you understand what all these symbols are. Yep, yeah, some of them. That's weird. The last thing she wrote is he knows about me. Oh god, that means he was after her. You don't know that. Come on, we should move. Oh, Wait, what is that? The museum. That's strange. Why would this be in her book? I don't know. Just, just take it and figure it out later. She's here somewhere. I'll check here. Head toward the back office. We gotta go. Stay out of sight. Go, go! We once again sneak past some more cops and even see Rex pass by on our way to the Bell Killer War Room. Once inside, Joy dips once again with the book in hand and it's our job again to chase after her. Well, I got what I need, so see hey, ya. If you keep trying to do this alone, you're gonna get yourself killed. How would I just leave it as... Oh, you won. Crap. Making our way back outside, we can quickly catch up to Joy.
Hey! You can't get away that easy. If you care about the case so much, find your own damn clue. You won't find your mother without me. What? Leave now, find my book at the station, and don't look back. All right, listen. Your mom wrote that book to help find the killer. It's not gonna say what happened to her. The truths we're both searching for can only be answered by finding the killer. I need a pair of hands in the living world, and you need a detective. The last case. Ashland Hill Cemetery. They can't see it, but it's there. What? I, I don't know. I get. I guess. My mom thought there was a case that was linked to the Bell Killer. Cops didn't. Okay, we go there next. Ashland Hills. We? No, we? Come on, we need each other. You need me a lot more than I need you. Either way, partners. Fine. For now. Now is all I worry about. Ronan. My name is Ronan O'Connor. I'm... Joy. Seriously? And Ronin is better? Wouldn't your parents think you'd be a medieval gladiator? So we're really going to a cemetery, huh? Yep. Uh, I, I have to do something, so I'll, uh, I'll just meet uh, you there. Uh, 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 no, 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 I'm not letting you ditch you me again. You follow me, the deal is off. If it was meant to be, I'll see you there. If not, I won't. Uh, you better show up to that cemetery, kid. You're the only living person I have left. Making our way over to the cemetery, Ronan discovers that he's being followed while he reminisces about Julia. I used to see this as Julia's final resting place. Now it's just where her body is buried. Guess I'll be buried here soon. This is home to neither of us. Just the place for others to come and remember what they used to know. So long, Julia. Upon entering the cemetery, we can make our way over to Joy, who turns out the reason she went off on her own was to one, grab a flashlight, and two, make sure that she wasn't seen talking to Ronan, as still like before, she's not the biggest fan of letting people know that she is a medium. However, Ronan is quick to realize that talking to the people of the cemetery will actually be a good idea. Having the murder take place at a cemetery means that there'd be a lot of witnesses. One ghost states that something had happened behind her, and from the looks of it we can find a washed up body that had floated from upstream. As well as this we can find hemp rope leading back to the bell killer case, and we begin to infer that whatever we need to find, we'll find it if we travel upriver. And while talking to Joy about this discovery, she brings up the victim, Sophia, who Ronan recognizes as the ghost who was following before, and thinks of an idea to go and look for her. Joy is not so thrilled about this idea, and so we are then forced to go up on our own, while she gets sworn by the many spirits of the cemetery. Talking about Did you 
hear that? Of course I heard that. Demons. Shit. Demons appear and force us to split from Joy as we begin our investigation on our own. And after a while of traveling through section to section of the cemetery, going past differing groups of demons, tour guides, and graveyard dates, we find ourselves at an extremely old pop up hospital at the top of the hill, with some very outdated medical techniques going on. Nothing like a good book. Shh, not now. I can't be bothered. Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? Fine, I'll just look around myself then. Don't touch anything. If you must know, I'm on the verge of figuring it out, piecing it all together. No offense, but these medical books seem a little out of date. I don't think you're breaking any new ground here. Why would I do that when there's so much old ground that needs figuring out? Let me ask you, do you know what the oldest known malady is? And of course you don't, so I'll just tell you. It's death. And every culture in the world has a book on the subject, usually lost and usually taboo. I've dedicated my life to unraveling the mysteries of death. I'm close, but there's still something missing. Some things are just better off lost. And from talking to a few ghosts around the place, it seems that over the years, the building was never a good place for medical help. But eventually we managed to catch up to Sophia, who up till this point had been running away from us. And we then discover that she is unable to talk to us before rushing away once more. However, this time we're able to do the same with the power of teleportation, and we begin to give chase for the last time. We use our teleportation to get out of the building and continue our path through the cemetery. And after finally catching up to her, we're able to see what she's been trying to show us this whole time. Sophia had been trying to lead us up to this tree, which is the location where she was killed. And I'm gonna give a bit of a warning now because even though there's already a lot of violent stuff and story and lore that happens throughout the game, I've gotta say that these flashbacks of the bell killer victims are the main parts of the game that really genuinely freaked me out. So here's a timestamp to go ahead and skip the whole sequence if you want to. All you really need to know is that Sophia was a bell killer victim, he asks her about a contract and then puts her into one of those old witch trial water chair things and you can get the picture. you this way. Hey, it's okay. You can come out of the water now. It's okay, come on. I'm on your side. I don't know about any contract. Please, just stop. The hell is this? Contract? What, what, what did he mean by contract? No. no. This is the memory of your murder. You're too young. You shouldn't see this. I swear I don't know about any contract. Please, just stop. Why are you doing this to me? Who are you? What are you doing? <laughs> You're him! Oh, no! I don't want to That die. symbol. Stop it! Please, just... <laughs> Please, just... No. No, 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 no. <laughs> He drew on you. His symbol. It must have meant something. That. I 
I should get back to joy. Sophia is a tragic character who we only get to see for a short time, but what she tells us is invaluable to us. We know now that the Bell Killer is looking for some kind of a contract, and for whatever reason he's really elaborate with the way in which he's choosing to kill people. But returning to Joy, we inform her of what we know. Ronin! I heard screams and... It's good that you're okay. Well, I'm still dead. No, you found something. Yeah, I did. Bell Killer drowned the girl in the lake and let her body float down river. My mother was right. This is a Bell Killer case. Did you find anything about my mom? Memory residue or something? Sorry, kid. And it's a good thing you didn't see what he did to the girl. This guy is... He's sadistic. One weird thing is that he, he confronted the girl about a contract before he offed her. The contract? I don't think I've seen anything about a contract. Wait, wait, wait. Another case possible Bell Killer survivor. Iris Campbell. Diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, incoherent ramblings about persecution, and a contract. Again. And where does it say where she is? Um, it just says Lux Eterna. Is that a place? Yeah. Lux Eterna is a mental hospital. Of course it is. <sighs> okay, ready to go? Uh, actually, um, you go on ahead. I, uh, I need to visit someone here. So I'll meet you at the hospital. Worst nightmare than this. So we'll be together. Be together soon. Sorry, Julia. I, um, I got some bad news. I, Don't worry, bro. She already knows. Hospitals. The one place torture is considered for your own good. If their experiments ever succeed in restoring a person's sanity, they better hope it was at the expense of the person's memory. You ready? Relax, we're out of the graveyard. And into crazy town? A big improvement. People who see things nobody else can see end up living here. Not that crazy. Come on. <sighs> okay. I'll help you get inside, but... But what? Look, if we're gonna ask this girl Iris about this contract, the asking needs to be done by a living person, right? Just remember who opens the door for you, tough guy. Yeah, yeah. We enter the building only to find that the woman at the desk won't let us in, and in order to actually get through to meet Iris, we influence her by reminding her of her son, who is seemingly struggling with his own health problems at the time this photo was taken. Oh, kiddo, I hate being here and wondering if you're okay. You're all I have left. Just like this girl's friend is all she has left. Sorry, 
I know how hard it can be when someone depends on you. What's your friend's name? Iris. Uh, Iris Campbell. Yes. It looks like your friend Iris is here. Everything's gonna be okay. Thanks. I, I feel better. We quickly grab Iris's room number and find out that she's scheduled for a shock therapy. Which would be heavily detrimental to us, as anything Iris may know could soon be completely lost to us. And we must once again quickly sneak past any orderlies throughout the hospital, much like we did in the police station. All is going well until... No, 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 no! What do we do? Alright, keep going. Get to Iris's room. No, no. We stick together. Joy, we don't have a choice. Now, I'll meet you there as soon as I figure out a way around this. Go! And now being forced to go through the old abandoned part of the hospital, maybe now is a good time to say that. I am scared shitless of hospitals, but luckily for us, we are quickly persuaded by cat gameplay and we're able to do some more sick cat parkour. Stray has absolutely nothing on this game. And we travel through some quick vents before coming across, you guessed it, more demons. And they are not any less scary in here. But we're able to make it past them and back into the main section of the hospital to meet up with Joy before finally making it to Iris's room. Who... Isn't doing too good as of right now. It's gonna be fine. Don't you worry. Everything will be okay. I'm not gonna let anyone... Damn. I don't think we're worried about shock treatment, but she's already a lost cause. Don't call her that to touch you. All right, fine. You go see what our comatose witness has to offer. After all, Iris's mind is troubled with the memories of the Bell Killer and her sister, who she seems to be incredibly protective about. And from what we can see in the drawings around the room, she draws about the Bell Killer and being burnt at the stake. Apart from that, she seems to use art as a form of therapy and writes protection symbols about the room. But when putting all the pieces together, we realize that her sister is the one that was burnt at the stake. And when they were meant to be killed together, Iris' sister saved her by allowing her to run away. Once again, here is the time stamp to skip the scene, as the voice acting and just the showing of the scene is very guttural, and I understand some people don't want to see it, but that's basically what happens. Good 
I'm so sorry. <laughs> Rose saved Iris' life, but paid with her own. Bell killer's going after young girls. Well, what was it? What, what'd you see? A poor kid. Her sister freed her when they were about to be scorched, but she couldn't return the favor. Leave us alone! Iris, are you okay? She was possessed. I told you to stay back! <gasps> Who are you? I'm Joy. You don't belong in this place. Orderlies. Crap, I'm so dead! All right, Iris could be the answer to everything. Help her, help her! Come on, she's coming with us. No! You're not taking her! Look, you want the orderlies to shock her? She stays here. You want her to be safe outside? She comes with us. It's up to you. Rose realizes that we aren't a threat and lets us leave with Iris as we sneak past some more orderlies in order to get out the hospital. But I just want to talk about her design really quick. This game has a lot of really good twists and reveals and Rose's is probably one of my favorites. Her flamed up design works really well with the art style of the game and her protection of her own sister going so far to her feeling like she has to keep her under possession in order to keep her truly safe is something that just adds a good touch to the story and shows the underlying effects that the bell killer is having on the victims. But after making it back outside, Ronan tells Joy to take Iris back to the church where she'll be safe. Why do my worst nightmares keep getting way worse? Okay, let's figure this out. I thought I would never see this again. All right, so what do you know about this contract? Nothing, I... Oh, come on. It doesn't make sense. So he just asked you if you knew about a contract? He didn't ask. He wanted us to admit to it. Admit to having a contract with... Demons. Demon? We did nothing to him. He had no reason to go after us the way he did. The way he did? He drowns one girl and burns another. And where have I seen that stake before? That's it. All right, look, look, get Iris to the church, make sure that she's safe. I'll catch up with you later, go. Okay, come on, Iris. All right. Now what the hell does a museum gala have to do with Rose's murder? We realize that whatever the bell killer's reasons for killing Rose and Sophia in the ways that he did will be revealed to us at the museum. So we quickly make our way over there. Fitting for an investigation about a serial killer. All these murders have whipped this town into a frenzy. Now it all leads here to a gala celebrating a time when Salem found itself swept up in another whirlwind of hysteria. Walking into the museum, we can see the ghostly walls of the old train station littering the area, ones which were there before the station burnt down. And upon entering, we can immediately see that all of the exhibit's attractions and posters are all about a witch trial theme one which will become very important to us, and walking into the main room, we are able to see the different items on display, and our investigation starts. What does the museum have to do with the bell killer? Well, after taking a quick look around, we can see that certain methods used to identify witches, well, more of just execute, but tomato tomato in the old fucking ye olden times, I guess, were used to murder Sophia and Rose. While also taking a quick look around, we can come across this photo of the judgment house, 
and this noose, where we can witness a sequence with a possibly recognizable character. The time is upon us, Abigail Williams! No... You scourge of Salem, it is time to pay for your sin! Now, this isn't useful to us right now, but of course it will be later. But putting two and two together, we figure out that the Bell Killer is using witch trial methods on his victims. But to learn more, we need to go and sneak upstairs. I'm surprised there's no exhibit for the accusers. It's such an important part of Salem's history. Actually, several artifacts aren't on display yet. We're currently preparing them upstairs in the restoration room. I better see what else is in here. However, we have to make sure to not be too careless as... Ghost trains, and a shit ton of them too. We must quickly run past the gaps between the trains and use our teleport in order to get past them to get to the other side. Where we can find the stairs to the restoration rooms and after getting there... Joy? I told you to look after Iris. You're not the boss of me. I found a bunch of stuff downstairs. The bell killer is offing his victims as if they're witches. I'm heading upstairs to see what else I can find. I should have told you to follow me, and then maybe you would have stayed at the church. You know me so well. It turns out that Joy decided to follow us to the museum and sneaks in through a window whilst Iris is at the church. We make our way over to the restoration room and take a snoop around, finding a lot of old relics, photographs, and paintings. But most importantly, a clue stating that mediums were being labelled as witches, and a group of articles that tied together the recent bell killer victims as each and every single one of them were also mediums. We also find that in the back of the room, Baxter had been there to look at a photo which we can recognize as carrying the bell killer symbol over a photo of a hanged witch. And after piecing everything together, all eyes begin to point to Baxter. And why the hell is Baxter involved in this? He dropped the case when he was demoted. All right. Found the killer symbol. We got a suspect to look into. We're almost there. And not one step closer to finding my mom. Like I said, the world doesn't need another whiner. You know what? Screw you. You don't understand. Don't understand? My wife was murdered three years ago. She got to float up into the white light, and I got stuck here in this place with some bitchy teen. Ugh. Your mom's been missing what? Two, three days? Huh? And I guarantee you we'll find her. If I fail, if we fail, I'll never get to see Julia again. Ever. We won't fail. I don't need a cheerleader. Look, I'm sorry I didn't know about your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. We need to act on the information we found. You head off to the church. The church? Where are you going? Baxter's our prime suspect. I need to get over to his apartment and see if I can dig up any skeletons. Probably not a good idea for a fugitive to visit a cop. Fine, I'll meet you later. But before we even get the chance to exit the museum, we can hear whispers of conversations leading to some big event happening at the church. Tex, did you hear something else happen just now? Something bad. Did you hear what that guy just said? Horrible just happened at St. Benedict's. The church? So worried for Joy and Iris' safety, we rush our way over to the church. Cops and criminals get used to red and blue flashing lights. Even after you get numb to them, sometimes they still chill your bones. 
you can get that feeling that this time they mean something personal. Thank God you're okay. No, no, Joy, Joy, don't! Damn it! Lieutenant, caught her sneaking up the side staircase. Says she's a friend of the priest. Where's Walter McCauley? Is he all right? Just put her in my car. I want to interview her myself. Can somebody remind Broyles that the door's not going to watch itself? Yes, sir. It's a simple question, please! Take it easy on her. Hey, anybody find Baxter yet? Nope. Into the station, drove by his place, nothing. You know, there's definitely something wrong here. I mean, honestly, have you ever seen anything like this? Huh? Half this stuff feels like a goddamn riddle. I don't know. I just seem so demented. Demented? I gotta find this crime scene before they cart away all the evidence. Exploring the church once more, we return to the backside where we can unfortunately find the fate of Iris. Exploring her death site, we find that the bell killer had toppled over the large statue and stoned her to death. Damn it. She'd stayed at the hospital, she'd still be alive. Don't hold too tight to what's keeping you here. Just remember, this wasn't your fault. I'm sorry. What else did he do here? Taking into some more investigation, we travel around the rest of the backside of the church, finding that Iris wasn't the only victim here. And while on her tail, the bell killer had killed the priest and a celebrating group of people who had just gotten married. However, B's deaths didn't follow the bell killer's original plan and were more to just get them out of his way. However, we begin to learn just the kind of fucked up individual that the bell killer truly is and how they will choose to stop at nothing to do what they need to do. And this group of people just so happen to get in the way. It's also a good note to the fact that a lot of the time in crimes like the bell killers, the main reason that they're able to often get caught is due to them slipping up or getting too confident in themselves, leading to the police being able to either identify them or catch them. And since this is the start of the end of the game, it's a good nod to how real life crime works most of the time. After investigating Joy's room, we can find that the bell killer was here before Iris had even arrived and was most likely originally looking for Joy before stumbling across Iris. And with the quick help of our feline friend once more, we are able to find a key leading to none other than the old abandoned judgement house, which we decide must be the killer's hideout, and we immediately rush there to investigate, but not before checking in with Joy and informing her of what happened. some ghost thing and get me out of this. Come on. Trust me. You're better off this way. The killer was right. after you. How? What happened in there? He didn't suffer. You're lying. He died protecting innocent people. That's all you need to know. He died because of me. Hey. You know, pleading insanity isn't going to help you much on two counts of trespassing and felony escape. So you can drop the crazy act, all right? Rex, man, give her a break. You got anything to say for yourself? No? That's what I thought. We'll figure out what to do with you at the station. Why does this keep happening to Joy, me? Joy, tell him what we found. They need to know it all. You gotta find a way to convince him. Where are you going? The killer left a clue, a 
about the ancient mansion we saw at the museum. Tell Rex about that, too. It's probably the killer's place. Okay, I'll try. I always heard this place was such an interesting museum back in its heyday. Now it's just a place propped up by rusty nails and rumors. A place you wouldn't dare your worst enemy to go into. All right, there it is, Judgment House. Huh. Maybe this abandoned place isn't so abandoned after all. The house is one hell of a lot less abandoned than we thought, and once again, it seems like Baxter is the one responsible. Making our way upstairs instead of room with the lights on, we were able to deduce the room as being the Bell Killer's kind of own war room. Like we have the police, we have the police station war room, the Bell Killer has his own war room, and they use it to plot their murders. And on one of the walls, we can find a poem about joy. The witch who flew from her own mother. Herself a witch, herself in flight. She'll meet her death like so many other, and leave both realms this very night. Oh no, that's about joy. This looks like the Bell Killer's war room. I should check this all out. While here, we can also find a lot of personal items to the Bell Killer, as well as old newspapers of previous killings, leading us to believe that maybe this killer is just another copycat of the ongoing killings, as we can find notes going back to about a hundred years ago. But after hearing a door open, we go to investigate, being led down into the cellar of the house, once again avoiding demons as we go, and you will never believe who we find down here, none other than Baxter himself. Oh, he's already dead? I should have been the one that stopped you. Ronan? What the hell is going on? You sick bastard. Why'd you do it? Why'd you bring back the witch trials and kill all those innocent girls? You think I'm the bell killer? Are you, are you insane? I've never killed anyone. You gotta help me. What is this place? We gotta get out of here. Oh, we gotta get out of here. All of a sudden, we're buds. Uh, uh, uh. You need to tell me what's going on here. What were you doing here? Following a lead. I never dropped the case. Had this psychic, Cassandra, working with me. And we figured out the bell killer is hunting mediums. Like a witch trial execution copycat. At that point, we couldn't let it go even after Rex demoted me. So that's why you're at the museum. Do you know where Cassandra is? Is she still alive? Last I checked, yeah. I took her to a safe house outside of town. Oh my God, she's alive. I was sure she'd be dead too. Joy would be freaking ecstatic. She shouldn't end up alone. So who killed you? The bell killer, you idiot. But I didn't get a good look at his face. Where's the killer? No idea. He could be anywhere. But when we fought, he said something I didn't understand at all. Wait, wait, wait. wait. The killer actually talked? Not much. But I think I hit a nerve. I told that bastard he'd be dead soon. But he said, I already know death. And then something about his instrument of death will kill again tonight my instrument of death but he kills different ways every time I don't, I don't get it yeah me neither we gotta figure out what that means it turns out that baxter had already been working with joy's mother who is safe and out of town and even up to this point had already found everything that we had and while investigating the judgment house was attacked by the bell killer himself we do a quick search of the cellar and find memories of the girl we met at the start of the game, a girl who is none other than Abigail Williams, who we got a flashback to back at the museum under the noose. 
And under a closer look... You claim righteousness, but you know your guilt and cannot deny your punishment is due. I thought you stood for justice. How is this just? The courts are not a place for your murderous whimsy. You are a corrupt heathen. The families of those innocent souls you executed through false accusation of witchcraft will exact their righteous justice tonight. False accusation? What is that nonsense you draw? My mark will burn like a brand in the flesh of this town. If it takes me to the ends of eternity, I will personally make the bell toll for every witch in Salem. Why? The guy who killed me is... Abigail. She might be the bell killer. How is that possible? I gotta get out of here and figure out how to track her down. Abigail was never a witch. She falsely accused others of being witches and this eventually led to her downfall as the town turned on her. However, she still does so now in the modern day. However, we're yet to find out how, and most importantly, where she is to confront her about it. This is until we overhear a message on Baxter's old radio. Dispatch. Has Rex checked in? He's transporting a suspect to the station and we can't get him on the radio. He isn't picking up his phone either. Nope, he hasn't checked in. We'll notify you when he shows. Copy that. Oh shit, if Rex is missing, it could be going down right now. Where'd you take Joy, you asshole? We figure out that Abigail must have possessed Rex and is taking Joy to the museum to use her method of death against her and with a haunting task ahead of us, we race our way to the museum for the last time. No one deserves to be murdered. And when the psycho trying to kill someone pretends there's some grand justice behind it, that just makes it all the more twisted. Re-entering the museum for the second time, there is a totally different atmosphere than originally. You know that something is about to go down and it's only a matter of when. However, we don't get too long to think about this as turning the corner, we find a scene straight out of a history book. Joy! Ronan, help! Not another step. No, not you, Rex. This has nothing to do with her, Abigail. Oh. But it does. For 300 years, we have executed the witches who corrupt our fair city. Down there, let's go. Those who try to mask their demonic contract and leverage powers they should never possess. Just like you have. Don't you dare compare me to her! <laughs> easy, easy. Put your hands up! Help! Don't do anything stupid. Hands up! Stop what you're doing. Hands up! Do it now! Abigail, stop! Rex, you piece of shit. What are you doing? Not now. This was you. Didn't want you getting closer to the truth. Ronan, do something! Hold tight, kid. I'm on my way. In a scene which honestly kind of shocked me, we are put into a timed scenario with only 20 seconds to think of a solution before Joy dies. And after possessing Joy, we're able to remind her of that powerful scream she used against us back at the start of the game, which she then uses against Abigail. Blasting her out of Rex's body, where we're able to get another 10 seconds to grab Abigail by the arm and force her to relive the moment of her death where she gives us a whole exposition as to what's really been going on and reveals probably one of the biggest plot twists of the whole game.
The time is upon us, Abigail Williams. No. You scourge of Salem. It is time to pay for your sins. This can't be happening. You want to use memories against me? Two can play at that game. I know the truth about your death, but I still don't know the truth about mine. Did you use Rex to kill me? Rex was my most influential. The most respected, the most feared official in town. Of course I did. How could Rex have done it? Rose's killer had blue eyes. I didn't use the same killer for every murder. Baxter. Why did you kill Baxter? I eventually kill all the killers I use. Especially the ones who get close to the truth. I wasn't close to the truth in the apartment. I wasn't one of your killers. Why did I have to die? How could I? You made me kill her. If I'm going out, you're coming with me. In a sick twist of fate, Abigail is killed by her own powers, and the Bell Killer is finally gone from Salem. We all got a dark side, sometimes obvious, sometimes not. If we're lucky, we keep our dark side hidden. By law, Rex was a killer. But the law doesn't always see the truth. Fortunately, Joy did, and she would never press charges. <laughs> She might even help Rex cover his tracks. One thing's for certain. She's a better person than I was at that age. A kid who deserves forgiveness. She's paid her dues. And committing a few small crimes searching for your mom, well, even the coldest cops would forgive those. Hasn't been a bell killer murder since the night Abigail met her final end. But the case never officially closed. But memories fade, time heals. With luck, Salem will move on and find peace. 
Death repays debts, my father always said. Forever I believe that. But truth be told, this life ain't over until you're honest about what you owe. Set everything right. Settle your debts. Only then can you move on. Ronan? This final fight with Abigail is sure and it's all it needs to be. It's done well, it reveals everything that was done. I mean, the game was never about fighting, it was a scary murder mystery game. It didn't need to have some big boss fight, it was simple, it was sweet, it was nice and I loved it, honestly. It's a sweet ending to a dark tale. Life goes on and Ronan is able to find Julia, but apart from that, Salem just goes back to being normal. The game has its janks here and there, I will admit, but the story that it tells is good enough for me to look past them, and the gameplay that it provides was fun throughout. So fun that I was able to play through the entire game in the span of just two days straight, and I even plan on going back and getting any of the extra collectibles that I missed just to read up more about the town of Salem. Story and love has been put into every part of this game, and even if you also just wish to go and witness the parts of the game yourselves that I and the parts that I skipped out on, I heavily suggest doing so because the stories that the Lost Souls tell are really interesting and even just for the art style of the game alone, I am completely in love with this janky piece of a game. It doesn't stay past its welcome nor does it feel unfinished. Everything just seems perfect and I, just, I love this game a lot. <laughs> as janky as it is, I love this game a lot. I remember I originally played this game back on the Xbox 360 when I was younger and I am so glad that I was able to forget the game so that I could re-go through it again and feel like I was playing it for the first time. And honestly, I hope it happens again just so I can play this game again. I love it that much. But that will be all for today. Thank you so much for sticking with me talking about this masterpiece of a janky game. And once again, I wish you all an amazing 2024, and I'll see you again next weekend. Bye bye